what's up everyone and look not only are we back but once again we've got a living legend in the Yu-Gi-Oh community here with us introduce yourself today bro <laughs> hello hello my name is solemn or solemn Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever you want to call me um i have a youtube channel i'm a semi-competitive player let's say and i'm excited to be here so love it love it love it love it this is gonna be uh it's gonna be a good one yeah i think we've definitely was definitely starting the year off with a bang it's awesome to have you but you know even though i'm sure you may have already done some of this i think it'd be great if uh you gave us a little bit of an intro into yourself how you started on youtube and uh your journey into becoming a uh, one of the one of the yugi tuber guys for sure so i started playing back with starter deck pegasus so that's like mm -hmm. 2000 three or two I, I don't know it started like pegasus anyway i played for a long time uh, all the way to like the teledad era mm -hmm. um of course i was a little kid so i was too poor to <laughs> afford full power teledad and that's around when i quit like right after that mm -hmm. and i really started collecting again in like 2018 so that was around the time with like dangers and thunder dragon orcas mm -hmm. all, all of that stuff you know gradually came out uh, uh, one after another i bought a deck but i never went to locals you know i was just collecting like buying also like graded cards and, and old mm -hmm. cards i really like the vintage stuff really um i kept on collecting and then the 2020 boom happened mm -hmm. where a bunch of people started going crazy with like box openings and stuff because of covid yeah. you know everyone was at home so it's like what are we going to do we're going to look at our our pastimes from back in the day and so I started making content about the whole collecting part of Yu-Gi-Oh. I just really dug that, you know, showed showed off what I bought, uh, what what I sold here and there even. And then Master Duel came around and I was like, okay, this is the easiest way for me to actually get into really playing again. Mm -hmm. You know, so I hadn't really properly played, you know, since, since Teledad really. And then I, I just had to speed run learning the game so i could then actually make master duel videos at the same time so i was like on one screen learning Yu-Gi-Oh, and on the other making master duel tutorials it kind of it kind of made no sense actually but but it worked um at the same time i was still collecting but the collecting content i got, got kind of bored of and so now i'm mostly master duel plus tcg and it has been going well so oh lovely yes and uh, yeah, definitely. It's your master duel content that even for me, for example, that was one of the um, things that was a hook on for me as well. But one of the things that's really interesting, and I'd say it for a lot of YouTubers, I feel like a lot of the bigger ones, bigger YouTubers now have almost put, either pushed TCG completely to the side and just focus on master duel, or if they do do TCG stuff, they um, they do stuff like um, to what Team Time does, where it's literally like they'll focus on like they'll have like videos on dark magician and blue eyes decks and stuff like that so kind of like what's the decision for yourself not being one of those guys that you're still like you said doing competitive content but then also doing the master duel like and like do you find it that the master duel stuff is perhaps better or not better or like you know so for me i prefer competing by a landslide like mm -hmm. the, there's another card game that i play that's called card fight vanguard and there i give zero can i swear i don't know zero dance <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> <laughs> about, about the, the casual side of the game i'm just like i'm competing i'm competing i'm competing and in Yu-Gi-Oh, the more i play the more i'm like damn like i have fun with master duel but if i'm not going to tournaments i'm not enjoying the game to the fullest and so in my mm -hmm. ideal dream scenario i could just be making like competitive content constantly mm -hmm. but if i'm honest with myself i'm not yet at that level where mm. I think, you know, a bunch of people are just going to listen to me. Like, I, I go to regionals and I top and the regionals, but I go to a YCS and mm. I don't. And I know, like, I need to get to that slightly higher level uh, before I can, you know, turn the channel into a pure competitive type of channel. Mm. And at the same time, Master Duel is very obviously easier growth-wise. Mm. Like, if... If that's something you care about, you know, if you want to have the largest amount of viewers, I do think there is a certain level of you need Master Duel because there's going to be more eyes, which is weird because I think TCG has more players still. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I feel Master Duel is maybe more watchable in a certain way. It's yeah. like the animations mm -hmm. and, and all of that stuff. It, it feels more like an internet game than, than TCG where you're like, 
having to set up a camera above your play mat and then you know so it, it's a bit different of a vibe but ideally in my world i would love to just have it 50 50 where i'm competing hardcore and showing that off and then master duel mm. on the slightly more casual side if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. definitely makes and, and i i think yeah i do agree that definitely the watchability is at least some point point of it because i think the first thing that like caught my eye when Master Duel came out was just how pretty the game looks. And mm-hmm. like, when you go in Master Duel, the animations and like the little chibis that you have is like your I don't know what they're called, but like the little you guys know what I'm talking about. Master Duel mates. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Like little things like that, which is yeah, definitely, definitely a big appeal for it. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's and I think it's been awesome to see your journey as well because again, if you look at the Yu Gi Oh community, it's like I always say it, there's like a bit of a barrier. Thanks, love. There's a bit of a barrier in the Yu Gi Oh community where you have I would say you have. The smaller creators, so you have the people like me, you have Jimmy Fee, you have some of the other guys that we work with who are like below a thousand. Then you have another subset who are in like the five to 15, and then you have the big guys who are all above that. And it's interesting, really, to see kind of like you again as one of those guys who's like in that big community of big, uh, big Yugi tubers, but then at the same time, yeah, like you said, you started like three years ago, which is it's crazy. So you really have had quite a meteoric rise, which is quite cool. So firstly, thank you so much for even considering me part of those because I, I don't feel actually part of those. Whenever I'm like, I'm starting to form friendships with some of the bigger creators as mm-hmm. I go to events and you talk to them and, and maybe even a small collab here or there. But I still feel very much not part of those mm-hmm. gangs. I, I don't I don't know what to call it, but you know, so like part, part of those cliques. Yeah, exactly. Um and that's still very apparent, you know. Um, I don't mm. feel left out or anything. Uh, they'll be nice to me when I talk. But I definitely do know that I'm not part of the clique um, or something like that. But that also makes sense because, like, a lot of these creators have been making content for, like, eight years. Um, you know, and, and they're at... I, I also think definitely, though, that there's, like, a difference between creators who have been creating TCG content for eight years and then gradually mm-hmm. went into Master Duel mm-hmm. because there's that watchability. And people who got a lot of growth out of master duel because yeah. like if i go to a ycs right now there's like people coming up to me and that's like awesome i'll, I'll gladly talk to them but it's nowhere near the level as some of these people who were in tcg first because the people at the ycs are mostly paper players whereas mm-hmm. my viewers are mostly master duel players mm-hmm. yeah that yeah. definitely i thought you were about to say something down but i actually had no, a question, yeah. which you just no, reminds me of at, at ycs i always see like some computers and people playing master jewels what's going on there <laughs> yeah it's like From, is this a thing is this like people is it the same as the ycs but on a smaller scale is it just random computers that you can just go up and play like correct me if i'm wrong solemn but i believe they're like just demo pods and um i think at some american events they had like sort of eight man round robin pods where you could fire master duel but you had to bring your own laptop or something like that this is only so, what i've gathered from people talking about it Basically, they are supposed to be side events. Like you could, mm-hmm. at least last year, I don't know if it's still the case, but you could walk up to the side event stage and go like, hey, we have eight people. We can now play Master Duel against each other. And then you could get points to get like, you know, giant cards and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, however, because so many people at YCS are paper only players or they're playing, you know, just whatever paper if they can, um, those pods actually failed to launch so much that, I mean, they're, they're just there. <laughs> it's not really happening. Uh, it would be cool. And, you know, I'm sure they could maybe do something to spice it up a little. But so right now, it's mostly like an option that is not fully utilized. That, that, you okay. know what? I think that's so crazy that you say that because people who probably go to a YCS just don't know that that's a thing. Like, I've walked past the pods yeah. and thought, oh, that's interesting, Master Duel. And then I've just mm. gone about my business, not knowing that that could potentially be an actual event. So for those yes. who are listening, there's your chance. <laughs> you could. If, right. if you're with eight people, you could go and say, hey, let's let's try and oh, destroy wow. each other and get some points, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just before we get um, I'd say we're into another sort of topic here. Um, I wonder what your thoughts were with regards to the um, the Master Duel, like how they do the uh, the Road to Worlds and things like that. Because um, a, a lot of the bigger creators, you could you we'd see grinding for like what thirty hours at a time. Like I know Joshua mm-hmm. Schmidt, obviously, uh, quite yes. think. I know Farker was putting in work as well. Um, what are your views on like how the Master Duel um, sort of like ultra competitive side of it um, fares when up against the TCG? If that's something you thought about. So I think the way you qualify for Worlds is like really, really 
inhumane almost. It seems, it seems like, <laughs> like you're like, training for a marathon yeah. almost. Like, I'm friends with Quantal, an awesome guy, awesome player, and the stuff he has to go through, <laughs> you know? And, and you saw Joshua, you, you saw yeah. him streaming it live, and, and just by the end of it, you think... Why are you putting yourself through this? And yeah. and to have it be a thing again, but then, how do I say, more consistently now? Because now it's like, last time you had one chance. This is your one weekend, and you're mm -hmm. either in or you're not. This time, you have multiple weekends like that, and then the most consistent across those weekends gets in, and then also per weekend people get in. Something like that, right? I don't know the, mm -hmm. the hyper-specifics. Um, I guess it's slightly better because at least if you have something come up personally on that one weekend last year, now you could at least, you know, choose the other weekends. But still, you're still grinding at a insane level. You have, is it 72 hours or something like that? Yeah, at least a I couple of days. So. I believe so. Yeah, and then, and then you have to sleep for maybe five each night and hope you don't derank while sleeping because other people <laughs> are fasting you. And it's it's crazy. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I think there should be better ways. If you did, you I, did. Any one of you follow Hearthstone? Uh, I was a follower of it um, round about like the initial time. So like when Shudderwalk mm -hmm. was like the big deck, um, mm -hmm. fell off like quite soon after that. So like I'm familiar, but not super familiar. Right. So I'm not saying their esports system is great because there's a lot of issues, especially now. But at least uh, a couple years ago, you could get in through either tournaments, you know, so mm -hmm. you're just a really good player and you're, you're grinding the tournaments and getting better that way, and then also being the highest ranked. So you had mm -hmm. multiple avenues depending on what kind of player you are, because there are some players who are like 72 hours of, you know, almost dying, let's go. But there's <laughs> others who are like, no, I just want to be a consistent tournament player and get in yeah. that way. Yeah. So yeah. some kind of combination seems like cleaner, maybe. I, I think agree. that makes sense because for some people, seventy-two hours of pure grinding just isn't feasible, right? No. Yeah. It still it still feels like Konami is like still kind of working out the kinks with regards to mm -hmm. that whole process when you say it like that. Because in in addition to that, like if you hadn't have told us that, I I, I personally wouldn't have known, and I wouldn't know where to mm. go to find that information out. If you get what I mean. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? and then yeah. process it and then be able to then engage with that so that's quite yeah. interesting i find it interesting yeah definitely that is, uh, <laughs> that is kind of wild but i suppose you've got to be in it to win it <laughs> yeah i guess i don't know because i the other thing as well as i think is on one hand it's nice that everyone gets to compete because I, I watched i watched part of joshua schmidt's um, stream when he was doing it. On one hand, it's cool that it's like you're basically on the same playing field as like a Joshua Schmidt or Evan or Quantal, like, which is mm. cool. On the other hand, I don't really want to be like they're just <laughs> better than me. Like it would be nice to like go to talk to the like I like it when I go to regionals and I don't see top players. I remember uh, it was like a joke amongst me and my friends when it was like um I can't remember I can't remember which event it was. It might have been like it was one of the big ones last year. I remember everyone going around being like, "Oh, um, this pro, pro player is here from Europe, and this guy's here from Europe." And then we were like, "Why are they here?" And one of my other mates was like, "They're like, because it's free. <laughs> they're like, they'll never like, just come to the UK and fire us all." <laughs> so yeah, it's like a toss up. But um, yeah, I also agree with Andrew. I think yeah, Konami are still figuring out. It seems um, they're a little bit behind, but yeah, you know how it is, and they, I'm sure they'll get into it in the next few years. Hmm. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Especially because at the start they said like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna really try and turn this into an esport type deal, right?" And then mm. I guess now they're just gradually improving with every iteration. So I'm down for it. But at least from the outside looking in, because I'm not trying the master duel world mm. grind, I'm just like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, I'll make some content, you know, and I'll play TCG competitively. But you can have this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and I think what what you said as well has very much stoked me. I will have I will jump back into Master Duel and, and start draining in and doing some content on it as well because it's something I feel like everyone knows it in their hearts that like, yeah, Master Duel's where it's at in terms of content. But oh, it's I definitely a bit of both though. I I yeah. checked out your channel and you're really on that like consistent upload grind right now. I feel I am, yeah, like yeah. oh, there's fan, there's a. P H N Y and I. It's like no one yeah. has a nightmare. It's like I'm gonna upload. Like Magic Specter is crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. talk about everything. You know. Yeah, so right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I give it. it a try. Thank you, thank you. Yes, giving it a try. Um, trying to be consistent. I... 
it's hard to be consistent. I look at other yeah. people's channels. I feel like Jimmy Fee is is a much better example of consistency than me. Oh, okay, okay. I'll be consistent for like three weeks, and then you won't see me for like a month. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've been there. Sometimes I just vanish. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's why we have three hosts on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But um, Ben, you wanted to get into our, our first awesome topic, didn't you? Yes. So, um, Solemn, you put out a video, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, um, weighing in on a topic that we've talked about on the podcast before, a topic that mm-hmm. I'm sure pretty much everyone with a platform in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community space has talked about, and that is the increasing price of getting into the TCG at a competitive level. Mm-hmm. Now, your, your video, I thought... Um, when I, from a very interesting angle, we made a lot of really good points in there. Thank you. Um, so I want to ask, what was it that actually inspired you to make that video? Was it just a case of you were like on Twitter and seeing people like weighing and having arguments, and you just thought, you know what, I've got to have my say? Or did you just sort of want to get the video out for the sake of weighing in on the topic? Or just... so, just on Twitter. I saw some of the bigger names and bless their heart, you know, they're really good at the game and so forth. They've been playing for so long. Maybe they know things I don't know, but I saw some of the bigger names make some of the most awful arguments I have ever seen. And I was just like, there is no way you have 10,000 Yu-Gi-Oh players listening to you saying this stuff. And if they had, if anyone had ever either followed like an economics class or a statistics, mm-hmm. statistics class, or even just a class on like debate, you know, from from a bias perspective and so forth, no one would be okay with this. But somehow <laughs> things kept on being repeated, yeah. and I, I just couldn't. So I was like, nope, I'm gonna list all the arguments that I think are garbage, and then just break them down. Um, and then that's how the video came about. Mm. So for, for anyone who might not have seen the video, what would you say is the most important point to take away from it? Like if they were to check it out. So I think the biggest thing is like Yu-Gi-Oh is expensive. And mm. anyone arguing like, no, it's fine or not. No, it, it is expensive. Everyone agrees. And then the people who are the contra, like are arguing to people who are saying it's expensive. They aren't saying it's not expensive. They are saying, actually, it's okay that it's expensive. And Mm -hmm. here's why. And then they give all these reasons. And I basically disagree with, like, a bunch of those reasons. I think that the the pricing level of Yu-Gi-Oh! is too high. And there is really no excuses. But on the other hand, I do think Konami knows that. And it's, like, gradually improving here and there. And if we can keep it on that track of gradual improvement, I'm all for that. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I do think it's a, sorry Fabs, before I'm sure I feel like you're about to say something, mm-hmm. but I do just want to add that it is really interesting, like, that you say you started out as a Master Duel player and you've moved more to play in the TCG competitively, purely because so many people I know have gone in the opposite, like, sort of path, like, they started in the TCG, they were like, oh, this is too expensive, I've got to Master Duel. Um, I just thought it was really, I thought it was really interesting how you, how you how you'd done sort of the opposite. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought, that would probably probably would have been part of the reason why um, you would, would have wanted to make that video and get that topic out there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But. For me, uh, again, when I do something, I get very obsessive. <laughs> and so to me, it's just like, I want to get better and I want to get better and I want to compete and I want to show people I'm better than... Ah! And, then, and so just that one thing to prove yourself, I think automatically is more so going to push you to paper where the infrastructure for tournaments is already properly in place or at least i feel mm. better in place mm. you know if someone's like i'm gonna try to be the most competitive Yu-Gi-Oh player out there they will get to paper i think because master duel again they're still trying to tweak things it's pretty new still and so to me it's mo- more so a i want to compete thing rather than a i think paper is better thing because if anything if if you just look at the core game Master Duel has the potential to be more competitive because if if they properly worked out everything, you know, if they made it TCG, which is a dream everyone has and probably isn't happening, but if they made it TCG and best of three and they fixed some of the things that, that, that a lot of people complain about, Master Duel does not have the time rule issue. It's mm. just like you, you have the time or you either play fast or you don't. A Master Duel doesn't have the potential of cheating, which, you know, is going to be a thing with any trading card game. No one's stacking their Master Duel deck. I mean, if they can, <laughs> insane. Um, 
There's no like sharking, like either you broke the rule or you didn't. So there's so many things that a digital client doesn't have in terms of issues that it has the potential to be so much more competitive. It's just that the infrastructure around it isn't particularly ready yet for that to be the case. And so that's why I think I gravitate more towards paper rather than master tool. And it does, and the price is like quote unquote irrelevant, but that's mostly mm. because I've been competitive in other card games. And so I know that it's going to be, you know, big bucks. And so then I just deal with it. I'm not happy about it, but it's just like, if I want to compete, I'm going to have to spend the money. Sort yeah. of is what it is, right? Yeah, sadly. <laughs> and I, I really like that take actually, because I, I I've never thought of it from that part, but yeah, really, if you look at Master Jewel, I mean, there's huge potential for an event. Like, even um, yeah. so, there was this guy called his name was like Jeebus McCasin or something. He used to run tournaments, uh, rogue tournaments on the Yu-Gi-Oh subreddit. Mm -hmm. And so the way it would work is like, um, if you guys have done, it's like there's like a specific ban list for rogue decks and blah blah blah. But the main point of it is that when you wanted to do a match, you could have a choice between doing it on DB or doing it on Edo Pro. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time, it's like even doing something as simple as playing song, because at this time I didn't really play on DB, but as a new player, even my willingness to play in those tournaments was heavily influenced by the fact that I could play on Edo Pro as opposed to that I didn't have to go on DB because Edo Pro yeah. is just easy to use. Like the only thing I really say that Edo Pro doesn't have that DB has is like in DB, you can roll back stuff if you make a mistake. Edo mm -hmm. Pro, you can't do that. But it's like even that little yeah like, extra thing was enough to get me more interested and it's like when you pull it out to master jewel again it's like if you wanted to get into Yu-Gi-Oh and you wanted to get into it seriously as a competitive player but like you're right at the beginning i feel like that would be a really big like incentive almost to be like yeah i really want to do this and it's free um, for, quote unquote free yeah and all this kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah i suppose but, even, um, though, even going back to tcg like in the, the like the covid times you had um yeah. uh, had a ppg dueling book cooks you had mbt doing his mm -hmm. quarantine sh um I can't think of what they were called, but they were very, uh, very sort of very frequent. So yeah. I guess there is an argument for best of both. But yeah, yeah. I but know. I'd also agree that the prices are. are <laughs> yeah, I, I also saw some some very very suspect arguments and and opinions, and I, I always think it's interesting when I when I see some of them because I feel like, and that's another reason why. So like, yeah, I also watched that video. And one reason I really liked your video because sometimes I I do feel like it's a bit disingenuous. People make these arguments like the one that that always like gets on my nerves is the whole kind of like, oh, Yu Gi Oh is barely expensive. Back in my day, it cost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, What are you chatting about, bro? Like, yes, okay, cool. Called dark armed and all of that was super expensive but how is that relevant to what we're talking about now mm -hmm. like lots of things or the other one being that yes you get expensive but other hobbies are more expensive mm. and and I can say with confidence, like I, I'm, I'm very organized in my budget and stuff. You go is by far my most expensive hobby. Like it's not even close. For sure. <laughs> yeah, like I have an Xbox and a PS4. My, my um, rescue ace deck. I could have bought a PS5 instead. Like I could with have some games. Yeah, like... <laughs> probably. Like me not having a PS5 is a clear decision. Like right now, I already know this month. Like I'm dropping about 300 quid on like bonfires and all of that stuff. Like. So, yeah and there. people will go like oh but you know for for a golf thing you need like the best golf club but i'm like this golf club is going to last me five years this rescue ace core is going to be banned in four months <laughs> like, yeah, I've, I've, I've never liked that argument of comparing it to another hobby i get where the argument comes from but unless you're comparing it to another hobby that is sort of like that where you're going to have the um sort of rotation of I suppose items that you would use to enjoy the hobby. Yeah, I don't know. It's an argument that uh, I, I never really you, sat well in my mouth. I was gonna say, if I could pick your brains on this, Salam, do you think do you think Yu-Gi-Oh players would be a little bit more? Um, I wouldn't say willing, but accepting of a higher price if Konami released less sets but better sets, in a sense. Because when when I think um... about Bonfire, I'm sorry. When I think about Maze of Millennium. And there's like three or four. Call it bomb. Call it a set bonfire. Well, bonfire like, the set bonfire all, set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you think of those sets. It's like those four cards, and then everybody just discards the rest because they're just they're not really. Do you get Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like if yeah, yeah, yeah. if they'd for sure concentrated those good cards into like fewer sets over the year. Do you think Yu-Gi-Oh players would be a little bit more accepting of the higher prices, quote unquote? Yes, and also I think first of all they would be more accepting because it would be less often. So maybe you can budget for it. You know, I only need to have to buy this crazy new card in three months rather than every month. But mm. also it would mean that since there's more valuable good stuff per set, that now 
all of them will have to go down because there's way less cards, you know, carrying this bad set on their back. Mm. <laughs> like Maze of Millennia, yeah. if, if Maze of Millennia is just bonfire and rollback, of course those two are going to be expensive because the vendors still need to make all their money on just exactly. those cards. Exactly. You know, the Magic yeah. Spectre cards might be good, but they're not carrying that set, you know? <laughs> yeah. As much as I'd love to normal summon Bombiku again, uh, yeah, it's not cutting it when wanted exists. Like it's really not. No, I, th I think Magic Spectre is a bit of a sleeper, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, for sure. you know, I think Magic Spectre has an incredible Viking matchup, but at the same time, it like it literally doesn't matter when I've gone plus six off wanted. Like it, it literally doesn't matter. Unfortunately, <laughs> that, that's the really sad part about. And it, I think the other thing as well that's frustrating about those side sets not having a lot of good cards or having like mediocre cards compared to like other sets so the exact example i'm thinking right now is like wanted and snake eye stuff compared with like silent force for example silent force is a really good archetype mm -hmm. but it's nowhere near as good as the fire decks and even that's an issue as well because like now for example if i'm someone like i'm someone who's always loved ritual decks like ritual and fairy are like my two favorite things in Yu-Gi-Oh. but it's like if i want to play competitive genuinely like i could play silent force but if i want to give myself the best shot I'm playing a wanted deck. There's just there's nothing else to do, and even from that perspective as well, it's frustrating, and it makes me not want to buy those cards. I don't want to invest in Silent Force because it's like ugh, I'm going to invest in this deck, and then but like the the really good example that I always think of is um back all the way back in Pope, um, uh, what's it? Goatee came out, so Goatee came out at that time, and it was like the Goatee cards weren't even that good then. But Tyr and Sprite came out then, and then it was like, I already know that Tyr and Sprite are going to dominate the format for like a year, and then by the time I can even look at the goatee cards, I mean, it's been power crept, it's been a year. Mm. So it's almost like, what's the point of even buying this? I'm never really going to get to play in a competitive mm. event and have like the chance to really shine with it, which is a shame. Yeah, though maybe in you know you're getting some new cards now, and Shifter's yeah. gonna be good into the fire stuff. So, uh. <laughs> it, do, you, do you know what the saddest part of Goatee? So I've been testing a huge amount with Goatee. I've got a Goatee video coming out, by the way, guys. So, yeah, oh, okay. Tuned. But um, the saddest part about Goatee is that it's probably like the worst Shifter deck ever, because for some weird reason, Konami made them like semi reliant on the grave. I don't know why. Yes. And then, okay. Yeah. And then it can only play on your opponent's turn as well, which is also a bit of an issue. Like, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We'll see some go easy supremacy. But I think an, <laughs> an, an, another thing I want to bring up, which I was incredibly disappointed by, is the dichotomy of Ashen, the new archetype that came out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so let's get into this. I feel like Ashen probably has some of the best artwork we've seen the Yu-Gi-Oh ar archetype in a while, right? Like, I, I don't think I'm alone in thinking that. Right? No, absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, and then, it's, it seems like such a love letter to um like the Dark, Dark Souls, Souls yeah. Elden Ring. Those um, I can't think of the name of the company now, but um, uh, from software. Yes, yeah, yes, and, but, yeah. The art artwork is is top tier, honestly. Yeah, but the yeah. play style. <laughs> it's unplayable. <laughs> that, deck is nah, that seems a little bit unfair. I don't want to say I it's unplayable, but it's not good. The hand drops are right. Yeah. I read the hand trap, I was like, whoa, and then I read the rest, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was the biggest slap in the face was when I saw and they didn't have a level one fire monster. I was like, what the heck? Like, yeah, sure, <laughs> it's virus. Dark. Yeah, it was all dark. It's like, great. <laughs> I could use a lore of darkness in it. Oh, it looks like... I... No, <laughs> I like it. I actually like that because it means that if people do want to get in, do want to play the archetype, they don't have to spend loads of money on an engine that's probably going to get hit on the ban list in some way over the next six months. But I see why people were like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was definitely done intentionally. When I watched the video and he actually stated, you could use a lure of darkness. I thought, ah, okay. I see, <laughs> I see where this is going. You're not going to get backlash off everybody who hasn't got bonfire now, are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh I mean, bonfire you'll still be using because they are pyro, yeah, but exactly. wanted and all yeah. the fire stuff, like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I say this all the time, like, if I'm going to spend £150 on a place at a bonfire, I refuse to spend it on a deck like Ashen. Like, it's that, I feel like I'm just, I'm punishing myself. Like, it's one of the worst feelings in the world when you have, like, it's, it's the same with Prosperity. Like, I used to own um, Prosperities. Well, I still own them, but when I first, when Prosperity first came out, I bought it. And so I was playing from, it with Rogue Decks. Bought it from a Dolce, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, great, it makes Madolce good, but it's still not a good deck. Like, it's still, I'm still no, playing no. Madolce. Like, I should have just played, been playing a good deck with it. So it's like, that's the, the annoying part of it. It's like you bought a Lamborghini seat to put into a Toyota. You're like, oh, <laughs> exactly. this is such a great seat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah, so it, it, it is quite sad. And I don't know. When I look at the archetype, for me, it, 
sometimes you can look at archetype and go, oh, there's like potential. Like, again, it's like if I talk about Silent Force again, I look at Silent Force, I'm like, this has the potential to be a top tier archetype. Mm -hmm. I think it already is. If, yeah, to be fair, if you ignore the wanted decks, it's probably one of the best decks. It's top five, probably. Mm, yeah. Know? And then, f you know, four fire decks, and then it's fifth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Well, it's like, so, so, like, you look at Silent Force, and it's like, this is a great deck, and one or two more cards, and this could be insane. Whereas Ashen, you look at it, and it's like, genuinely, you could get Ashen Circular, and I still don't think it'll be that good. <laughs> like, mm. I'm down for Ashen Circular, though. <laughs> yeah, the artwork, and that would go hard. Yeah, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So, sorry, a little little sidetrack does anyone here play Elden Ring because I'm very excited about the DLC coming on the 25th there's DLCs coming no one here plays it uh, right, it's cool yeah, right, if I you're know, excited talk in the comments there's DLC for Elden Ring coming out on the 25th yeah, I, don't own a, I don't own a console bro with, 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 oh, yeah. with no <laughs> I mean, it's on PC you know what's we'll <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, yeah. you, you guys need to know about the glory of Elden Ring and how fun that is. I play card games because I have no reflexes so any <laughs> game where you play fast it's like nah that's <laughs> what I'm saying it's all on the same camp <laughs> in the same vein of the kind of action and stuff so phantom nightmare like we've had a little bit little chats about but what are we thinking about phantom nightmare some of the cards coming out in that in that set and the format as a whole um what are we thinking about that guys who's uh, Solomon, um, you go ahead. Me and Andre have talked about this a little bit on the channel already. Um, I'm just going to talk about Ubel for five minutes. So, <laughs> okay, I, I will not talk about Ubel. So you can have, <laughs> you can have Ubel all to yourself. Um, so there, there's a lot of good stuff in there. Mm. I'm excited, of course, for just any fire pile. I'm not excited for playing what everyone else is already, you know, building. If everyone already yeah. has like the best technical play because they're already on dueling book for 200 hours, I'm like. Okay, I'll do it for the tournaments, but I will not enjoy it nearly as much as going like, okay, how many fire decks can we put into one pile of 60? That, that is what I like to do. <laughs> so any anything with bonfire populace and, and so forth, of course, mm -hmm. is going to be crazy. Promethean Prince is looking crazy. Um, Goatee, though, I, I have my core ready. I'm, I'm going to cope a little and, and see what happens there. I'm also excited for the Raid Raptor stuff, yep. though. That stuff looks like... It looks like... It, maybe Manadium, where like my thing goes off, I won. I can yeah. go second, kinda. Mm. I have room for non engine, kinda. I'm slightly fragile, but you know, if I go off, I go off and it's over. So that that looks like good fun to me. Not so much mm. for people sitting in front of you, though. Kind of like Dark World, actually. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, Raid Raptor sort of gives me the same vibes as like Dark World and like Heroes yeah. um, in that sort of sense where it's like. Seems super fun to play, but very um, glass cannon. -y. Yeah, frustrating to yeah. sit in front of. Um, if, it's, it, it, they just got a new card, right? Or am I mistaken? No, they've got a lot of new cards. Yeah, in Phantom, yeah, Nightmare, Phantom Nightmare, they're getting like loads. crazy good support. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. another. I think that's what another tower is on Reddit or something. But sorry, sort yeah. of going on. Yeah, crazy. Like there's so much. Like like you're gonna read these cards and they're they they basically got Raid Raptor circular. Like, if, if you think about it, just spreading some cards in, in multiple cards. They play through, like, most hand traps. They're just a little frail if you Imperm or Valor their uh, Raider's Knight and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But So that is going to be really nutty. Um, but, yeah, mostly just Promethean Princess. Like, I've been playing Rescue Ace a lot now for, for yeah. tournament play. And whenever I now get stopped in combo, I'm like, wow, if I could make Promethean Princess, you were dead, but I can't, <laughs> so pass. <laughs> so so I'm I'm uh, I'm very excited for that, at least. Yeah, I, I think that's the perfect example of exactly how I've been feeling rest case lately. Yeah, it's genuinely like, oh, just wait, like two more weeks. Yeah. Two more weeks of that imperm, oh, you get punished <laughs> on that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, yeah. One, one of the things that um, is interesting about... Uh, a Phantom Nightmare as well. When you look at the archetypes released, I feel like I don't want to say they're all good, but I would actually say like I'm I'm more impressed by Konami's card design looking at this set. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't say any of the archetypes look particularly it's not like Maze of Millennia where it's like genius like what is this trash? Yeah. It's like with 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 Phantom Nightmare Pretty much all of the cards, like the U-Bell cards, I think me and Dan had a chat before, the U-Bell cards are even pretty good, like mm. fairly impressive. The Magic Spectre cards are actually quite good. The Earthbound stuff is, let's not talk about that. But it's like, yeah, there's a lot of really good cards in the set, which is yeah, nice. Yeah. It's nice to have kind of a big spread of good cards. Yeah, definitely. The Aroma Support as well. Um, I've yeah. never read a Plant Link card in my life, but I imagine oh. that they're pretty good. Yeah, you're <laughs> I don't want to get FTK by normal anymore. It's, it's long. Like, I think we overcame this, but 
I think I think <laughs> I this is the, the the time of this the timing of this set is interesting because it's kind of like a set that appeals to like quite a broad market because you got 100%. a lot of legacy stuff in there, but then you just mm. got like these new powerful ultra competitive cards in like um mm. Princess and like Populous and that. So I do think it's it's very well designed and it, it it's just it it makes me frustrated in a sense when I think of Maze of Millennia was like, I don't know, two weeks before. I'm like, what? why did you do that? Just put Bonfire in with that set as well. Like, don't make me buy Maze and then you release Photon Night, I mean, sorry, Phantom Nightmare and I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I feel it's that up and down that kind of frustrates me because I feel like they could just do this like yeah. more consistently but less regularly if you get what i mean yeah 100 percent. i agree um, this is truly becoming like the maze hater podcast no, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, i thought maze memories was all right <laughs> did you though <laughs> i was playing brian didn't it? i had a guardian chimera support um reprint i was gonna think it was all right yeah i didn't even... i genuinely, genuinely like i got maze last night i got a transaction rollback the rest of the cards i threw in the bin like, yeah. i can <laughs> confirm that this is this is an insult yeah Um, one thing i do like actually um about some of the side sets and like what they did with mazes i it's it's like i like it but i don't like it i like the reprints of the rest case cards Mm. but i think they reprinted some of the wrong cards so it's like um hydrant turbulence made sense to reprint i don't know why they reprinted all the spells and traps they were already rare like literally every single spell and trap and rescue is already a rare or super, and then it's like they just got more low rarity reprints, which for me is like quite frustrating. But I do like, and it, it kind of goes into Final Nightmare. One thing I really like is that I think I, I hope I'm not I, I'm not remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure we know that Populous and Promethean Princess are not secret, right? They're both Ultra. Um, so this is the same thing that Populous hasn't been revealed yet at all. Yeah. Um, the thing with the Promethean Princess is it had the same thing that Little Knight had when on the um, initial reveals where people thought Little Knight might have been Ultra, um, but I think it was the QCR thing. So the consensus is, I mean, as of recording, we'll find out tomorrow, okay. um, but the consensus is that Promethean Princess is an Ultra, but it may end up being a secret just because of, I don't know, how they rendered the image or whatever. Um, but I think as of, I was looking at this earlier, as of right now, there's six of the secret rares confirmed i want to say maybe mm. more um so it's it, it, i mean if we go back off um like previous things the there's probably going to be one or two u-bell secrets um mm. maybe one of the horus cards like maybe probably not though uh populous and like uh mm. what's it called rum 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 tufflin rumble rumble Sk- that that trap card Oh, I, yeah, know, I, know I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, and I Rumble Toyful or something yeah. like yes. that, right? Like, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so, and then that leaves opportunity for maybe Promethean Princess. Um, mm. But it could be an Ultra. Um, oh, okay. Probably use some probably just change it it makes me a little bit sad for a second for the last like week i've been thinking oh okay they're not secrets it's gonna be pretty good news i mean if, like, if you want to if you want to take the if you want to take um a gamble there's someone on ebay doing a pre-sale for 35 pound right now no. 35. Yeah. right i'm gonna look that up real quick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everyone's opening their browser <laughs> <laughs> and... yeah speaking of which pre-sales and going back to the bonfire discussion i feel like I'm surprised people still haven't learned with pre-sales to not buy pre-sale prices. I don't think mm. ever I, I've mm. really seen you people being rewarded for buying pre-sale, personally. Mm. I feel like every time it happens, like, pre-sale is always crazy, then the card dips, and then it goes back up. I agree and I disagree. Really? Yeah. Um, so, I think with pre-sale, you're always going to be taking a bit of a gamble on it regardless. Like, Let's take Age of Overlord, for example. Uh, yeah. So I tend to do pre-sale just because I like I like the knowledge of having my cards. And then if mm-hmm. I take an L, I take an L. It is what it is. Uh, I managed to get a little night on pre-sale for 55, which you say that now yeah. seems like a pretty good deal. But on the flip side of the coin, um, I also pre-ordered uh, Horus Core. And that was only... Even with the spike um, that he's had, I still mm-hmm. paid more in the pre-sale. So... I think it depends really on how you look at it. Um, obviously, people can spend their money however they choose to. Like, um, mm. I was having this conversation with Fabs earlier. I'm going to be pre- pre-selling the u bulk core because I know for a fact I'm going to be getting value out of it. Um, and I just yeah. want to have it, um, like, even as a collector. But I think when it's come to like um, 
I think the biggest thing we've got to talk about here is the pre-sales for uh, Tier Shizu. Well, Shizu in particular, oh, because wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. they were they were oh, God, yeah. awful. Yeah. I got so, destroyed there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah. I'm same. I'm saying. It's so, because I, I was going to ICS Pasadena, and so that was the release weekend. So it was like right. Kelbeck twenty bucks. I either pay that or I'm not playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I, th I think there's um. With pre-sales, I think you have to roll with the uh, dogs mm. and roll with the elves. It just depends on, like, I guess, how you want to spend your money and how much you value having the card. Yeah. I mean, one of the interesting things, if we look at the what well, TCG now is, like, we still haven't had a YCS announced, though it's probably going to be announced relatively soon. Yes, there's been German Open and Italian Open, but other than that, there's the not. The UK, UK Open. We, UK Open's just been announced, but before this, it was almost like there was not much incentive to even buy pre-sale. Like, that was... When me and my friends we had all just been like we're not even going to buy these cards yet because we don't know if we're going to a YCS yet we don't know where it's even going to be yeah. and all of that so like there's that as well like when there's more events and more things and I don't know if, if it's just me but it really feels like we have a really big drought of YCSs and big events in Europe like yeah like, what's going on? Take or not getting one I think at, really? at all oh Do gosh I don't know because like Nationals is going to start what April? Yeah, and, and, and normally they at least announce like a month, like a th a thick month before that, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, nothing. Yeah. I I don't know. I I feel like it's just not happening, which is weird because I'm like, I want to go to YCS. I want to play with these new cards. Why am I even yeah. buying them? I like regional top school, but like that, that's not you know, <laughs> it's not yeah, as exciting. I want to top a YCS. I want to that that crazy mat with like the purple monstrosity. I don't know its name anymore. Um, yeah, Plutonia. Another verse Glutonia. I want that mat, but I can't get it because there's no ICS seemingly. So I'm yeah. like, maybe, maybe it's just not happening. I, I don't know. Like, oh, I really hope not. That would make me really, really sad. Cause, yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah. some people on Twitter were like, oh, it's probably not happening in Europe. I'm like, gosh. Nah, oh, it, 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 you've just got you, you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see another one in London, um, or maybe even like another YCS. Uh, it always seems to be in Dortmund, right? Yeah, that's yeah. That, that would be twice in a row already, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. Where's the other one? There's there's like t two or three places they usually have YCSs. Utrecht. Um, Utrecht, Utrecht yes. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's what I'm thinking of. Um, Utrecht is lovely. But I do feel like if they were going to announce it, it would have to be really sort of before the end of the month. <sighs> As a, as a quick, let's see. Um, and we'll start with you, Solem. What's been your favorite YCS? Ooh. Um, I, w I want to ask before Solem answers is this a YCS that we've personally played? That you've been YCS? to. A YCS right. that you've been to. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, I think it would have to be YCS Dortmund because mm -hmm. I went into, into it with Pearly. I got absolutely sacked and i know everyone says they get sacked but no this was like someone opening like shifter lightning storm martha oh gosh. and so like they shifter me i go i make pearly beauty set four i'm like all right i made something at least through shifter they go lightning storm everything away martha i'm like oh <laughs> so like you know sometimes it just happens and so after round three i dropped I then started grinding sides with Tier Lament, which is my mm -hmm. actual favorite deck, and then I won that thing that way. It is a big, big, big old uh, card. So that was that like a, a little, like, yeah. It's uh, Destina, Destina kind of sucks, but. It's Destina, yeah. Crystal <laughs> but you know what? The artwork's pretty dope. It's yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, that's a that's a nice little price to to cut. And I feel like everyone always says they're gonna grind side of it when they drop out, but like. I no mean, one does. Yeah, it's like no one really yeah. does. So it's nice that yeah, you've gotten that, and it's a pretty cool looking artwork. Though, yeah, say. thank you. So, and a lot of my friends actually had the same thing happen, and also started grinding price uh, like giant cards. So yeah. we actually had like four of us with four giant cards in like one car driving <laughs> back to Belgium. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just like we all failed, but we also all kind of like won in like a smaller way. So that was just like a good vibe. Um, but otherwise, yes, were also really great. Like. How about you? Andre, you can go first. Uh, you just, you took a breath. I, I could see it coming out. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I'd say YCS, YCS London was really good. Uh, it was really mm. good. Uh, in terms of my performance, it weren't the best. I think I was playing Mathmech. Um, <laughs> but my first four rounds were against people who had flown into the UK to compete. 
okay. which I really enjoyed because there was a bit of a language barrier. There was a lot yeah. of oh. there was a lot of gesturing. And uh, <laughs> like after each of the games, like I sat there and just spoke to my opponent for a little bit and I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. It was crazy. And I think one of the rounds, I was just talking to somebody and then somebody must have recognised me from like my channel. And I just, I went to, I was running around the venue like, yes, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> <I've> made it. <laughs> so yeah, that was definitely an experience. Um, it was good. It was good. Yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> what, what about you then? So I've only actually been to one YCS, that being mm -hmm. London. Um, so I guess by default, that is my favourite YCS. But I am going to answer the question a little bit differently um, mm -hmm. and sort of go with like my sort of favourite top, top premier level event, which would have to be uh, Nats of 2022, which was uh, just before Power of the Elements came out. Uh, it was in... Uh, Yes, was it Rotherham, I think it's that science play. It was in that science yeah, thing, yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember what what city it was, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was like the first event like I really like tested for properly. Um, I was really happy with my deck choice. I played branded, um, but I didn't play like the edge and gas build that was going around at the time. I just played a lot of like um, non engine like hand traps, cross out, what have you. Just sort of stuck to the game plan, made me really good. Um, yeah, it was really fun. Like I missed out on getting a top 128 just because I got masquerade in time, which was salty. But you know, I was like, I've made, I've done a lot better than I thought I would. Mm -hmm. And um, also, one of my uh, one of my best friends, Adam, also uh, didn't do too well in the um, main event. Um, part, probably because he made his deck list on the toilet about 15 minutes before the, <laughs> the uh, before it had to be submitted. But he actually, he's a big Speed Duel fan and we were watching him play in the final of the Speed Duel Attack of the Giant card oh. and like watching watching that game, like being like so aghast for him to be able to like actually like come away with like a, a massive prize was, was so cool. Right, and he's got, awesome. he's got, he's got a giant um, elemental hero flame wingman and, oh. I, and I want it. <laughs> and I know I'm not, I know I'm not going to get it, but still makes me happy to know that one of the boys has got it um think, uh, oh, on the side as well one of the really awesome things about that event was that was the one that um nick burgess won and i think his story yes. as well was very it was really lovely to watch like his story like that the, he, he had like for those of you guys who's watching and don't know about it so the this guy's there right the tritron guy yeah. yes he this is like his favorite deck he'd be in and he'd even said in the finals like he had told his girlfriend that he just wants to win the event and then he's then he's done basically. And so it was just really cool watching him. He played like a flipping legend as well. Like he really showed just how amazing Dragon still could be. And then he won. He was like, Yeah, peace out, I'm out. I mean, a year later we still like, saw that he was still playing. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's that as well. But I thought it was really cool. Yeah, no, that yeah, that was a great that was a sick final as well. Like it was. Yeah. both players played incredibly well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and also far for top that event as well. I'm looking at the top top which is pretty good. Yeah, um, Raphael Nevin topped it as well, right? Raphael Nevin. So it's, it was Doctor Nick Burgess, Alex Robertson, Oliver Newton, and then it doesn't say the fourth person, which is kind of peak. It has third to fourth, and it just says Oliver Newton. And Lana, <laughs> so they decided to leave that person out. Fair um, yeah, but what what was I would say for my, I, I feel like I've, I've mentioned this like 10 times on the podcast, but uh, my Belgium, favorite YCS, right? ha, yeah, has nothing to do with YCS. It was YCS Belgium. Me and like eight of my friends, we all went and we all stayed in um like uh, a part hotel thingy where it's like, it's like a hotel, but like an apartment thing. And it was just a really, really fun time. Like I did trash in the event. Um, This was tier, this was, was this tier format? I don't even know what format it was. The point is, I didn't do very well, so it doesn't matter. But, um, <laughs> like, we just had a really great time. The first night, we got really drunk and just, like, had a great time in the hotel. Next night, we went and explored Belgium and stuff. Like, it, it was just really fun, and I think I hadn't, I haven't, so I don't like flying, so I hadn't flown out or done anything like that in a long time, and it was cool going with some mates and enjoying it. I think it's also making friends in Yu-Gi-Oh! is, is, is for me a really big part a lot one of the things that makes it so awesome like being able to interact with people that i wouldn't have normally interacted with mm -hmm. and so it's like i always really hold that holiday as like one of my most enjoyable holidays i just had a great time with them getting to see belgium and all of that was was really really cool so yeah definitely that's that's an awesome event i think um, you've meant, awesome. you i'm not sure if you mentioned this on the podcast but i think you mentioned it to me before like one of my favorite aspects of you telling that story is like how you like you called your wife and you're like ah oh, like i've scrubbed out and she was like well who cares you're in belgium going to have fun 
you lot, you know you're right. <laughs> yeah, mate. So it's like one of the things that I, I don't do it anymore, which is good. I used to beat myself up a lot at events because, like, I'm, I'm I'm a bit like you, so I'm like, I, I really want to do well at events. Like, it's a big mm. thing for me. Like, I've been even doing a series on my channel, like, about me trying to get better at the game. And, and so it's like one of the things that always pisses me off is when I make really silly mistakes. And it's mm. funny, I have a habit that I have now after I do after every game because of a mistake I made at an event, which is I always count my side deck now. Every game, I count my side deck. Because at that event, I was in the event, and I don't know like how I made the mistake, but it's like I didn't count my side deck, and then I think one of my side deck cards ended up in my main deck, and then oh. I lost the game for no reason. And then that was like one of like six huge mistakes that I made that I was just like, why am I, I was just like, why am I doing this? And yeah, so yeah, I called my wife, and then she's just like, at first she's like, this is why I love my wife, she's very honest. At first she was kind of like, oh yeah, sorry, but then she's like, she's like, you spent bare money to be there. Like, stop being sad. <laughs> just like, be happy and just, you know, do better. And if you're not going to do better, enjoy the time. And I was like, you know what? It's true. And yeah, I had a great time. So yeah. yeah, really, yeah really shout out to all the supportive partners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout, shout out to them. It's, it's nice to have them to kick you up the ass sometimes. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, um, was that the well, European the Championship then? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah go, go. That's 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 the European sorry. Championship? Because if it was tier format, there was not a Belgian YCS. It, it, it was, it was. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was like the first event before. It wasn't, it wasn't Kelbeck format. It was before that when people were playing Danger Tier. Yeah, European Championship then. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah it was. Oh, okay, fair enough. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that 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 would be mine then. So yeah, I don't know. okay. If I was to say YCS, then I guess my first YCS as well. YCS Milan was awesome, just because Milan is beautiful. That's the real reason. <laughs> I went to Milan and I really had a good time there. Um, but yeah, uh, all right. So we've got. I've got another topic. But before I move on to this topic, does anyone have anything? Any last thoughts on uh, why CS is all Phantom Nightmare? Um, not that oh. I don't think has already been discussed. Yes, right. So we've talked about prices and stuff already. But one of the really, really interesting things that I think we've seen in Yugo in the last two, three years is that. We've seen prices of Yu-Gi-Oh increase dramatically, but at the same time, I would say that we've seen the barrier to entry, I would say almost, like the ability to actually join and play Yu-Gi-Oh get down. So we've seen things like Rarity Collection come out and like sets been changed and stuff. We've seen the two-player starter set that recently got released. What is our opinion on those? And then also specifically Rarity Collection 2, which has just been announced. Uh, I'll I'll tear this one off. I think I think it's good. I think it's great. I think it's really two sides of the same coin. I think it's very mm. interesting how a company can simultaneously annoy so much of their fan base and also <laughs> make so much of their fan base so happy at the same time. Because if we look at Rarity Collection One, that set is probably the best set of all time when it comes to value. Yeah. Um, Rarity Collection Two, I don't think will hit the mark as much, but I welcome it with open arms. <laughs> Um, the two player starter deck, I I get why people don't like it, but also it's not it's not for you. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a, I believe Pokemon have a similar sort of product. Um, maybe other TCG still I'm not aware. Uh, where it's like it's meant to help get people into the game. And um, yeah, I think I think that's a good thing. I'm all for the growth of the game. Um, and yep. in terms of like reprints, as long as they're relevant and. <clears throat> At an appropriate time, then crack on. Like I'm, I'm not in the, I'm not in the uh, market where I think something needs to be reprinted like two months after it comes out because I don't think that's a good business model. But I also think there's nothing wrong with like you know letting a card breathe for six months or so, like from a business perspective, not yeah. from a player perspective. Because I like, I like to look at things as realistically as possible, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really have anything bad to say about. It. These these products are, that have come out and that have been coming up in terms of the bangers. I mean, obviously, I think I think I know I've talked for a little bit. So before I pass on to um, Andrea Solomon, I'll just say I think it's been interesting how over the last few years Konami seem to have put out as many good products as they have bad, which I think is not too bad actually. I think that's mm. you know it's okay. I mean, feel free to call me out and say no, then that's wrong. No, I, but. I was gonna say, I'll just just to concur with what you're saying. I think they've done a good job in in terms of like the barrier to entry, and I just think about some of the structure decks that they've released, the good ones, like uh, mm. Al, like the Albaz structure deck, um, obviously the Fire King structure deck, like trap those tricks are real, even. yeah, tra tra trap tricks as well. Those are real like structure decks that you can actually like, like yeah, got the fundamentals basically, especially like with some of the rep reprints that they've got in some of these structure decks. I feel like I feel like there's no 
there's no excuse not being able n- enable you or yourself to get into Yu-Gi-Oh and start playing. It's just yeah, the next yeah. echelon, which is probably something that they need to work on next. But in terms of entering the game and playing, I think I feel like they've done a, a, a decent job. Um, just because but, everything's so accessible in, in, in low road. But you know what? I think that's part of the reason why people get so frustrated about the price points of getting onto that extra level. Because on a surface level, like like we, like I've just said, like like Andreas just said as well, it is quite easy to get the sort of like initial base of mm. your what you need. But then it's like, let's not lie. You take three, you take three structure decks to a local, you're going to get stumped. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not to mince words. Like, yeah, let's call, it, fair, let's, yeah. let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> like, it's getting further on that level that seems to be like the most frustrating bit. With Rarity Collection, it is getting better, but there's, there's still work that needs to be done. So I, I think that's where a lot of the frustration comes from, um, if I'm being honest. But I've waffled on for long enough. Solomon, what do you think? So... I love Rarity Collection. I think anyone loves Rarity Collection. Like, I was at my locals when it released, and everyone would open a box, and I would go like, oh, you got that? I want to buy it from you. This is a crazy cool card. And someone else opens a box. It's like, oh, Max Rarity Time T3 Doer. I want the Max Rarity Time T3 Doer. Someone else opens, you know, an Effect Veiler in the, the, not Starlight, like Quarter Century Rare. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm using common Veilers right now. I might as well spend like 30 bucks back then um, for this Veiler. And so like anyone could find what they want at whatever price they want. If you wanted mm. to bling out your deck, you could walk out your store having spent 2000 bucks on, you know, just a max max bling. And if you want to just get started, you could walk out the door with every staple you need for maybe 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. And so I love that. Um, right now, also, I have a lot of people who ask me how to get into the game, which is, you know, I make Master Duel content, which is relatively casual, and then tournament content paper. So just the the jump from Master Duel to Paper is something I'm asked about often. And so just being able to go like, all right, so you need these and these and these staples and you can literally get them for pennies right now. Mm. That is awesome. Mm. What's also really good right now, I find, is that there's solid mid-range decks in which you can put these staples, you know? So if you have your Ashes, your Imperms, your Veilers, your Tactics is cheap now as well, your Mm. Lightning Storms and Cosmics for your side, your... All of these like staple-ish cards, you can buy them really cheap. And then you can go, oh, Sword Soul is like tier two or whatever. Here, here's a couple pennies for Sword Soul cards. You got a deck. Uh, you want to try Marinces instead? All right, you can put those staples in there again. Like you can actually get started playing for very cheap. Mm-hmm. Now the issue is that once you go, oh, Marinces, while I can go to locals and if I actually learn matchups and use my non-engine, well, I can probably win here or there. If I go to a regional... And I sit in front of like rescue ace, you know, maxed out. There's nothing I can really reliably do. You know, you'll win here and there because you impermed Diabell Star and they had no follow up and it was over. <laughs> but very often you will just, you know, get stomped. And then being told, oh, you need to spend a thousand bucks actually because there's Wanted and Diabell Star and there's Bonfire <laughs> and Populous and Promethean Princess and otherwise you're not playing. <laughs> That is like frustrating. So it's yeah. great to get started and go to that like casual slash local level. But then once you try to jump higher, I think the jump right now is very is aggressive. Really yeah. yeah. I just want to point out, I think it's so hilarious how so many of our conversations in this podcast have ended with, put wanted and stuff is really expensive. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's like the tagline of everything at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, that? I agree. Yeah. Is true? I mean, I think yeah. I think hot take that um, everyone's talking like, oh, Wanted will get banned, blah, blah. It's like, nah. What's actually mm-hmm. going to get banned is the spell card that summons any fire level one from the deck. Yeah, yeah. First of all, that is so generic. Perfect. Like, as long as they print level one fires, this card is going to be bullshit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry for swearing. I don't know if it's allowed. Uh, <laughs> but whereas Wanted just searches that. And so they could very easily have Wanted search Diabell Star and Diabell Star set some trap as just mm-hmm. a generic omni negate it's not a real omni negate um engine like, like that yeah yeah almost like you're like an invoked engine kind of thing right yeah. yeah whereas it's really the fact that you have this spell that just summons anything um that breaks that engine and also yeah. this means they don't have to ban a secret rare which is something they would much rather not do whereas it's an ultra yeah. for the very bannable card in my opinion it would also yeah. make populous 
if it's a secret, not something they need to ban. It would be Bonfire that doesn't need to be hit because Bonfire has to sell Maze. And so it's just that Ultra, I think, is the thing that's going to get the nuke eventually. I agree. And that's actually a very good point. Like, if you hit Sim Seeker of Simple Spoils, not Seeker of Simple Spoils, what's it called? Simple Spoils, original Simple Spoils, if you hit that, yeah, like, the engine is a little bit weaker, but then, yeah, Populous now becomes even better. So that's mm -hmm. actually a really, really good point. Um, I don't know. I, I, to be fair, though, I also think that the the, the real culprit, I, I think this deck is going to get violated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 As soon as we saw them supers in, in Maze of Millennia, I was like, yes, curtains, man. Nick's banned this. It's peak, like, <laughs> I'm seeing emergency to one, all these kind of things. Yeah, but is what it is. Um, so with the rarity collection, um, and I really like what you said, Solomon, because I agree so much about one of the things I love about I love opening rarity collection. Every single time a rarity collection pack is open, it's always like I just want something. So it's funny. Um, yeah. I was at Dudley Locals and one of my mates opened a Celine. Um, and he got a collector Celine. Now I have Celine. I have two copies of Celine. I've just opened my trade box. Are they here? No, they're not here. Okay, I think I've put them somewhere else. But I had two copies of Celine. But it's like, oh, you know what? I'm playing Celine currently in my deck and. Yeah, I'm just gonna get a collector's one, and I really like the aspect of rarity collection. Like any card I want, it's just randomly in there. Like some will open. It's like, yeah, there's an ulti prep. Well, a new deck is coming out. I want to play it with that, and I really, really like that. Mm. My problem though is I don't think rarity collection two is as good, and I'm worried that Konami will overdo it. I almost feel like rarity collection is something that I wish they waited almost like another year because rarity collection one part of what made it so amazing is that there were a lot of really good things to put in it and i feel like rarity collection 2 doesn't yet hit that and i think it's because they've done it so soon after like it's like how many good things and and i also almost don't want them like i wouldn't have been happy if they reprinted thrust and then also reprinted rarity collection 2 i would have thought that's ridiculous Mm. so i like the idea of them doing i like the idea behind rarity collection i like the idea of the two player starts and all of this stuff but i think it's okay to wait as well i think it's okay if we have one rarity collection a year or one rarity collection even every two years almost like i, I think that kind of set really can wait because there's so much good you can put in it and then on with the two player start set yeah anyone who complains about two player start set no offense i think they're just they're just not really aware of how the game is to be approached from like a new player perspective because I looked at that set I, I looked at the title of that set to be honest and I really didn't even look at the cards because like of course it's not for me like I don't care like what the <laughs> heck <laughs> like I'm not like I don't that's not how I play you you guys already a two-player game so when it's a two-player start set I'm already a bit confused like I don't know what they're talking about so it's like I, I I really feel as though yeah that set's pretty good I think MBT someone did a video explaining that it's like apparently it starts with like normal monsters then different mechanics and different mechanics and blah blah sure great um that's nice yeah I think that's going to be good for new players I still don't think if I wanted to get someone into Yu-Gi-Oh, to be honest, I think that my method of probably getting them in would probably be the Master Duel like story mode thing. I actually think that's pretty good, just because one thing that that like when you're teaching someone how to play a game, and Extra Credits did a really good um, video on kind of teaching people and like people who aren't. I'm, I'm going on a tangent here, but I think it's relevant, so we're going to talk about it. Um, there is a way of teaching people games when you're not gaming literate. Like, if I wanted to te teach you guys games, you guys have picked up controller, you guys have played games, and so there's a way I would teach you guys games. But if I want to teach my dad a game, or if I want to teach my wife a game, who's never done those things, there's a different way of teaching them games. And one of the things I think the Master Duel Story Mode does well is teach someone to play a game who has no interest and no understanding at all of how a game works, especially because it bakes it in with a story. So it's like you're learning the monarchs. Like there was law behind monarchs. You get to learn. It's like, oh, there's this really cool story. And then also I'm learning how to tribute summon. And it's like, you also, it helps you learn it because it's like you now connect monarchs with tribute summoning. Well, you now connect, um, I don't know, another archetype with this type with like world legacy with link summoning. So um, I, I think Master Jewel's probably doing it a little bit better in terms of new players. But I mean, it's a good set. The two player star set is still a pretty good set. So yeah, I don't have any negative opinions about it personally. Yeah. yeah, on the topic of Rarity Collection 2, I think that it is impossible for it to be as good as Rarity Collection 1 purely because Rarity mm -hmm. Collection 1 already has the most important or most of the most important staples. Like, you cannot beat Ash, Imperm, Valor, and all, all of yeah. these cards unless they make Ash 2 <laughs> and put it in Rarity <laughs> Collection 2. Like, you already got 
the most used, very best staples right there. So Rarity Collection 2 can only be like a support to that. And so that's why I actually think um, I <laughs> saw like the planets being reprinted. I thought yeah. they would, rather than it being a set that has all the best non-engine, I think we'll actually see some engines in there. We'll see maybe some tier, we'll maybe see some cash, we'll maybe see some vanadium. And now you have a couple decks that are still pretty playable that mm. also you can combine with your non-engine from Rarity Collection 1 and you suddenly have the ability to to build a deck as a new player from both sets. But again, that's me maybe coping. Maybe I'm all wrong and they just printed the planets and then said, you know, enjoy the planets and that's it. That's also an option. But I think it's going to be a, a lot of engine together with some of the non-engine we've already seen. If that's the case, I think that would actually be really awesome. Like, that is, I thought, I'd forgotten the planets were in there, but yeah, it would be really nice if, if yeah, like quite a few. I'm, I'm trying to think of another semi-old archetype that's still a little bit expensive like maybe like quem for example quem and cartesia being maybe. in them yeah sprites i reckon sprites, sprites yeah, so yeah. So that's a good point there are a lot of kind of semi-old archetypes that if they chuck those in as well it would really make the set awesome and that would be a good kind of um um little litmus test for like yeah let's put some like semi meta stuff in yeah that would be quite cool so yeah no it'll be good to look at but yeah, guys, yeah. we're go we're coming. We've just passed the hour, Mac. This has been an awesome, awesome show. But well, we're going to end with one thing. We're going to do a would you rather question because I think that's going to be a nice way to tip this off. It's going to be normally they're really wild and gross, but I decided <laughs> to be a bit tame. New oh, year, yeah. new me. All these things. Let's try and change. But oh, um... <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to throw the new section. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. That's a good point. No, we're going to do a new section instead. We're not going to do Would You Rather. Let's do the new section. Actually, no, we're going to do both because the Would You Rather is a funny one. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. And then so, we'll do the new section. Yeah, yeah, we'll do yours first. Do yours first. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, Solemn, um, mm -hmm. I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fire you off um, a section, um, a few A or B questions. It, all you have to do is pick one, say both or neither. So, say, um, if I say, I don't know, um, apples or oranges and you like bananas, you just say neither. For example, okay. okay, or if you sure. really like both, say both. So, okay. um, think about it as much as you want. Um, it's not like rapid fire or anything like that. So, whenever you're ready, we'll get started. I'm ready. Cool. So, I'll uh, we'll start off with a nice and easy one. Uh, would you rather play rogue or meta? Uh, meta. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. There's a little um, bit of hesitation there. Yeah. yeah, there's some hesitation because right now, like, if you tell me you have to go to an event and you have to have as much fun as possible and you don't care about topping, I'll play tier any any day. I love a weird tier pile. But if I'm going to an event and I'm like, I want to top, I'm like, I don't care about Rogue. I'm just going to play whatever I think is best deck right now. Yeah, so that's why enough. I like hesitation, but I'll go with meta. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. This leads nicely onto the next one I had. Uh, would you rather go XO with a deck that you hate or X4 with a deck that you love? XO with a deck that I hate. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're on this grind, there. <laughs> no, it's, I, I just tried. I went to a tournament with Toons because I'm like, I love Toons. It's just like my pet deck. It's really bad. And I was like, this is going to be so much fun because I know I'm going to lose. I'm going to have so much fun. And I started playing. And after round two, I'm just like, I hate this. I cannot do this. This this, this yeah. archetype has been ruined for me. At locals, I could win here and there because I'm like just comic handing people stuff away. But once they got started going like Cosmic Cyclone on Toon Kingdom, I'm like, this is just not fun anymore. <laughs> so I'll take XO with the deck I hate any day. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, would you prefer the Albaz law or the Visas law? Visas law any day. Ooh. Really? Okay. Ooh. Against yes. the world. Okay. I mean, it's the tier laments, it's the Manadium, oh, it's the Kashira. I'm, I'm oh, just okay. like... Fair, you know. fair. I forgot Tier was actually part of that. To be yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tier wasn't just an inside job. Uh, so, <laughs> would you rather play Yu-Gi-Oh! Or would you rather play console gaming? Yu-Gi-Oh! Any day. Again, no reflexes. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, may, you make me play like Dragon Ball or GTA, I'm just going to die every time. It's just like... <laughs> A man after my own heart. So we're gonna go a little bit uh a little bit in nostalgia with this one. Uh Duel Monsters or Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Hot take GX, actually. Come on, come on. I love oh Cyber God. Dragon. I love your Cyber and Dragon shirt, by the way. That is thank you. Thank that you. is really sick. So. Hot tight Highland. Um yeah, GX just incredible series, really. Uh would you rather go to a local or a regionals 
regionals. Okay, okay. Uh, combo or control? Mm. Combo, but that's only the case for Yu-Gi-Oh! Because anytime someone goes like, I like playing a control deck, and then they go flip skill drain, I'm just like, <laughs> no! <laughs> this is not like a floodgate. Like, I'm, I'm controlling every other card game, but Yu-Gi-Oh! control is almost always just flip the floodgate dot deck. So I'm just like, nah, give me combo. Fair enough. Yeah. And uh, as for the last one, uh, I feel like this really is the big one for you. Master Duel or the TCG? Oof. TCG. I didn't even think oh, no of hesitation. No, yeah. no hesitation. <laughs> Zero <laughs> hesitation. <laughs> yeah. I, that is surprising. I really thought that it would have taken you. I, would, I thought you were going to say it's taking you longer. Nah, it's it's very easy for me. Like, like again, I love Master Duel for the potential it has. Like mm -hmm. the the potential of no cheating, no sharking, no time rules, no none of the the uh, finicky stuff. But right now, if I want to compete, it's TCG. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I know I said that was the last one, but I've just thought of another one. Uh, which do you think is worse? Best of one in Master Duel or the time rules in the TCG? That is a uh, hot take. Time rules in TCG is worse. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And that's because I think actually in Yu-Gi-Oh, best of one is not that sacky. <laughs> and that's because the side deck, currently at least, introduces the sackiest cards. Oh, they introduce yeah. the skill drain and the anti-spell and the evenly and all these kinds of blowouts. Whereas in, Ma in Masudo, it's different because of Maxi, Crossout. Yeah, Droll. <laughs> exact exactly. <laughs> and so like right now best of three tends to introduce the, the type of blowout cards that you can't actually play in a best of one because they're simply too bad either first or second mm -hmm. and so if like if if we had a master duel right now that doesn't have maxi then you could actually have quite a non-sacky Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's a really well thought out answer actually i really like that that's yeah that's the same because I, so I, I don't currently play master duel and, and i I don't know what the format is like, but it's interesting to think from that perspective that, yeah, like, I wouldn't have to worry about, like, yeah, S3 in a best of one, I don't think, even in the format right now, I wouldn't main deck draw. It'd just be too risky. Mm. Like, I, yeah, mm. so, yeah. Very I suppose that's why Maxi is so good over there. Yeah, yeah. Best of one, Maxi. Oh, I think there was, someone did a list on Facebook or whatever of, like, the top cards, and it was like, Maxi was, like, 95%, Ash was, yeah. like, 91%, then, like, the next thing after that was, like, 50%. So yes, other than those two, I can't think of another card that is close to being as generically good. That's like, yeah, I want this in my deck for sure. Yeah, definitely. But um, Fabs, let's get into this. Um, would you rather? The thing is, yeah, I can't lie. Those would you rather is really good, apart from the last one. And my one's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're just gonna pretend I didn't say that. And we're gonna wrap up the show there. <laughs> okay, oh, for sure. Oh, good. Good, man. Sorry. I mean, yeah. Are, if, I don't care about them being disgusting, you know. Like I'm fine with that. Not so much. Wanna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. It's, okay, I'll, I'll read it, but it's genuinely just, it's just a bit boring. It's just. Would you oh, rather? Okay, be, that's... Would you rather be slightly cold or always need to pee? That was it. <laughs> yeah, slightly like... cold, easy. Like that is so yeah, easy. Slightly cold. Yeah. I was like, it didn't really, it didn't really slap, but hey, yeah. so <laughs> guys, with that, we're gonna end this awesome episode of the Yu Gi Oh! Thank you so much, Solo, for coming on. We've had an absolutely yeah, awesome Thanks for time. having me. And uh, yeah, to those of you guys watching, make sure you stay tuned. Um, for this, I don't know this is technically still season three, but I'm just gonna call it season four now. This is the first episode of season four. We have a lot of awesome, awesome guests, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know, um, who you want to get on the show, and let them know as well. Tell them as well, because then they won't ignore my DMs. There's some lovely people like Solomon who don't, but most people ignore my DMs. So if you, if you tell them, <laughs> maybe they'll listen. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all soon. Yeah. Peace. Peace.